Greetings, I, the War Al, greets you, and welcome to War Al Answers Questions, the show where I answer questions. The first question, on a scale of 0.01 to 1, how fun is your job making YouTube videos? Well, I would have to give that a solid 0.73 continued, just because, you know, I can't imagine myself doing anything else. Like, I wouldn't want to do anything else. I'm enjoying every second of it, but... Work is work, and there's, I think there's a lot of tedium that goes into creating videos that you most people may not be aware of behind the scenes, and some of the editing and, and uh, sort of putting this, the different parts together and making sure all the sounds are right and making sure the visuals look good. There's a little bit of tedium to that. Now, the most exciting part and the most fun part for me is writing it and, and coming up with the ideas and, and sort of investigating and learning more about the game and that, that, to me, is the most exciting part for me. So, you know, crafting it and putting it together, that there's, a, there's tedium there, so it makes it not a full one. But still, I can't think of anything else more fun. Like, sitting in an office, uh, give that a 3.7, maybe? I don't know. I, do, I, I enjoy it, obviously, but again, work is work. What would you think of a separate queuing system for a five-man pre-made team. Now, I suggested this back in the beta, way back then. I thought it would be really cool to use the existing infrastructure of Steam groups to do team-based games. So you have a Steam group, and if you're inside of that uh, private Steam group, and you're all queued together in the same lobby, it marks it as a team, it shows the name up there, which is something that they've actually added, so that the name of the team is not Counter Terrorists anymore, it's actually the name of the Steam group, if you have a, a full group of people, which is pretty cool. But, um, the argument against it back then, and having a, a five versus five sort of team ranked system as part of matchmaking, was that there weren't enough players, and that it would split the community, and there weren't that many people actually interested in it. The interest in Counter-Strike Global Offensive, the amount of players that we have, has skyrocketed recently over the past years, and... I think at this point, it makes sense to go that direction. I would love to see an entire uh, ladder system, uh, team-based play, 128 tick servers, everything set up with competitive rule set as well, not the two-minute timer, you know, one minute, 45 seconds, all the proper rules, the bomb timer and everything. That would be absolutely lovely. And I really think they need to get cracking on that because it's something that Counter-Strike really needs right now. There's too many hackers in matchmaking. There's all kinds of issues. And a lot of people... It, they don't want to use the third-party systems. It would be better to have it integrated into the game. You just click a button, and you're, you go. You're done. You go. Blah, 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 blah. Now, I have two questions here, and they're very similar. So I want to read both of them to you, and then I want to talk a little bit about this issue. The first one says, I tend to warm up for about 30 minutes in deathmatch servers before playing competitively. I'm very confident doing headshots in deathmatch, but in competitive, I tend to panic and start to spray. What should I do? A very concerned person. And the next one says, I played about 70 hours in Counter-Strike Global Offensive, which is, by the way, that's actually not a lot for Counter-Strike hours. This this game takes a lot of, of uh, investment into it, of time investment, to get good at it and really appreciate it well. And it says, and me and my friends really want to get into competitive. However, I'm incredibly nervous and feel intimidated for some odd reason, so I feel too scared to play a match. What can I do to not become so hyped up, nervous, and shaky before starting a competitive CSGO match? What you're both experiencing is something called performance anxiety. And I suggest you Google it, research a little bit more about it, because it's a very common thing. It's across all different spectrums. Like right now, me speaking to you, I would have to overcome some kind of performance anxiety. You know, make sure my hair looks right. I'm looking at the camera right now. The beard. Whoa, my hair looks red. That's weird. I guess I set my settings wrong. Whatever, we'll, we'll roll with it. I'm not going to get any performance anxiety. And, you know, my advice to you, okay, well, I guess just a simple explanation of what's going on there. It's like it triggers a fight or flight response, but since you're sitting in front of a monitor screen and there's no actual danger to you, it messes up your brain quite a bit, right? What works for me is having fun, and that is to not worry too much about the rank. Still try to win, of course, and play your best, but have fun doing so. And when you're enjoying yourself and you're having fun and you get over that initial hurdle of pressing the button to go, 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 um, it, I don't know, I always play better and I always perform better and I have a good time when I'm having fun. Just prioritize that. Don't worry about the matchmaking rank. Don't worry about what the other people are thinking of you or judging or you. I know it's difficult when they start yelling stuff at you, but they're trying to get into your head. Just don't let them. Um, there's a bunch of different things you do. There. Breathing techniques, you know, you can do your Lamaze. <sighs> or whatever you feel like doing to reduce your anxiety. 
Now, I, I have to deal with anxiety a lot because um, I have social anxiety, so I completely understand it. I don't really have performance anxiety, which is how I'm able to come in front of this webcam and speak to tens of thousands of people. Oh my gosh, they're watching me. Imagine them in their underwear. No, 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 don't do that. That's weird. The next question is, what kind of music do you like listening to? And I don't know if I've answered this before. I feel like a lot of the questions that I get are repeats of questions that I've gotten before and answered in previous videos, but whatever. I'll answer this question. What kind of music are you interested in? We'll give something personal about myself there. Now, if you've ever watched my stream at the very start, I play some music to, to start it off. And if you've listened to that type of music, I enjoy the music that I put there. A lot of it is just video game music or movie soundtracks. So video game soundtracks, movie soundtracks. I enjoy that kind of music. And aside from that, I like to listen to um, orchestral music. So mainly, like, anything from Baroque to, to Gershwin, I enjoy listening to. But generally, the stuff that I like the most is in the Romantic era. So we're talking, like, Beethoven, uh, Brahms, Dvorak, Wagner, uh, Berlioz, any of those types of folks. There's millions of them. Mendelssohn. I like that kind of music. It's enjoyable to me. Um, I used to play uh, inside of... Uh, orchestras, so I'm, I'm used to listening to it and performing it myself. I had a string quartet. I like that kind of music. I know, I'm a music snob. I'm not into the modern stuff. I really hate the modern stuff. I don't like groups. I don't like how music has become about like a lead singer or the personalities of these people, and they're just very, they're not talented. It's not about the music itself anymore. It's about the celebrity of it, and I really hate that. I really hate that, because it's not... I don't get it. It's not entertaining to me. I don't want to attach myself to some personality. I, I want to listen to some good music. And uh, why aren't the people who are writing the music getting the same recognition as these people who get up there and just do that for a little bit? I mean, I know, I understand. Your performance is, is a difficult thing. It's a, it's a very, you know, thing. I, I, don't, I don't understand modern music at all, basically. <laughs> Now, I have to add this. When I see people listening to the modern music, they're doing something else while they're listening to it. It's more like an ambience. It's more like a background sound than actual music. Like, they'll, they'll do it while they're, while they're working out. That's my workout mime right there. I actually look fat while I'm doing that. That's interesting. Or they'll do it while they're working or, or while they're driving their car or something. That's my, that's my, they're kind of the same as my workout. <laughs> they're the same thing right there. That's gonna be all my mimes are just like that. This is my dancing. Anyway, it's, it, that's not music to me. That's noise. They, they play this sound in the background to remind themselves that they're not alone in the world. That's not music to me. Music is something you actually have to take the time to listen to, to appreciate, to ponder, to think about. How and when were you introduced to Counter-Strike? Now, this is another one I feel like I've answered before for some reason, but I'll give just, like, a real quick answer. Um, I originally came across Counter-Strike, I believe, when it was, like, in beta, when uh, I was playing TFC, so Team Fortress Classic, and there was this game, Counter-Strike. It was like, okay, here is another modification of the original Half-Life, and I was very interested in the original Half-Life when I was young, and that, like, child age. So, I liked, you know, the modifications that were made for it. You guys remember the Specialists? There's a bunch of fun different mods for that. You know, the, the death match was kind of crap. TFC was great. Counter-Strike was great. And I first, like, played it for reals when uh, my cousin invited me to a cyber cafe. So we went to the cyber cafe, and everyone there was playing Counter-Strike. So we started playing the game, getting interested in it, and I was hooked immediately. And after that entire day of just playing Counter-Strike straight, I had to purchase it, I had to acquire it, I had to be able to play it at home, because it was really exciting. So I was only able to play it at cyber cafes early on, uh, until I was able to get it for myself. So, yeah, that was my first introduction to Counter-Strike, and I was absolutely hooked from the first second of it. If you had the opportunity to commentate an actual tournament on stage, would you? The answer is most definitely yes. I've always wanted to do that. I think I've wanted to do that for six years now. And I feel like my commentating ability is definitely at the point where I could do something like that. I feel like I've been following this game since the very beginning, since um, the early beta. I've been watching so many matches. I've commentated over 100 matches for you here on YouTube. Um, and I, I, you know, I, have, I get a lot of views for it as well. I'm very good at commentating. The problem is, or rather, I'm confident in my ability to commentate. The problem is convincing other people of that as well. And I also feel like there's probably some politics involved with that. I don't know much about that world. Um, and I haven't really spoken to anybody in it. So I don't really know where I would get started in, into making that happen. I think I'm poorly equipped in the sense of 
uh, networking, talking to different people. A lot of this stuff happens in Europe. I don't really know anybody. But still, your question was if you had the opportunity. I don't have the opportunity and I haven't had the opportunity. But if I did, I most definitely would. What is your opinion on opening cases with keys? Is it worth it? No. Stop. Don't. $2.50 for a chance at winning something worth three cents that at the end of the day is actually worth nothing. Stop it. I understand that people do it for a little bit of entertainment, much the same way as people scratching off lottery tickets do it for that little bit of excitement. Like, what am I going to do with my money? Or what if I get a knife? That'll be cool. Then I'll be the coolest kid around, you know? Oh, man, we have to do a tutorial on the pen flips. That's going to happen someday. Anyway, what was I saying? Don't do it. Stop it. I know Valve is going to hate me for saying that so much. However, it's obviously not worth it. You're not going to ever succeed. It's a losing game. It's just like uh, gambling. You're not going to win. They wouldn't do it if you could win. I hope you understand that. They wouldn't do it if you could win. And honestly, it's much more cost efficient to just look at the market and just purchase the skins that you personally want. Because then you get the ones that you want. And I mean, wh what else is there? To You're opening a case. What are you going to get? You're, you have a very low chance of getting anything that you want. People just do it for that little bit of excitement. Like, like I said before, scratching off the lottery ticket. They're not going to win the lottery, but it's just a little bit of fun for them. So if, you, if you're going in it from the mindset of this is going to be worth it for me, um, this makes sense from an from a investment standpoint, you're a fool and you need to stop it. However, if you are looking for a little bit of entertainment of ticket, 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 ding, go for it, buddy. Thank you folks very much for watching. I think that's going to be it for today. I am the War Owl. Remember to send your questions in. Check the description of this video if you want to see some questions. Actually, you know what? Let's do something different this time. Write in the comments questions that you would like to see for the next episode and upvote the questions that you'd like. And then I'll check out like the top comments, look at those questions, and we can work from it from there instead of just people sending in emails. Because I don't know if people want these to be answered or not. This way we can do it from a little bit of, of, of interesting way of like upvoting and getting the ones that you guys are actually interested in. I, ca I came up with that on the spot while I'm recording this, while I'm in the middle of this question, whatever. Thank you folks very much for watching. I am the War Owl, and I still have no closer. saying don't do it stop it